Hello, LGBTQ plus DL men, women who secretly love us and support us. This is a very special video, and um, I'm not sure what I'm going to title this video yet, but um, what I can say is this is a project that I've been uh, thinking about, uh, about a movie concept. Now, I need to say that uh, there is uh, only background in theater for high school and it was just a couple of classes. I was never in a, uh, let's just say there was a, a couple of classes. There was a uh, a play that happened in high school. I couldn't attend that high school play that happened for the reason that uh, I was also uh, in the high school band as a drum major in the years of 2009 through 2011, S somewhere in that area, right? But I was a drum major in high school uh, the year of 2010, 2011. And the, the year before that, it's the drum major two years. All right, now, yeah. that's unrelated to being in band. It's kind of unrelated uh, to the to the uh, movie idea. But I want to say that there is no uh, connection that I currently have uh, to any, like, major uh, production besides reaching out on some social media platform and I've been thinking about this movie that represents something uh, informative uh, for informative exciting let's get into it so this movie will be would be somewhat based on the twin flame journey uh, and then I seen two 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 as I uh, said that um, it would also be, uh, it will have, uh, parts that explain, uh, how their karmic families and it would be really deep diving. Now, I just, uh, if you can see now, I wrote like two two names and that's it it's just uh kind of on this journey with kevin as he's writing this but uh we're gonna kind of show like explain the idea all right there are two characters and there is this I always, when I vision a a movie production, there's always this thought of me playing the character. I wouldn't be opposed to playing a character that I write for, if I'm writing for it. And uh, there's this uh, other openly LGBTQ plus, uh, I want to say, I'm not sure if they consider themselves advocate, but what I can say is that I've seen uh, videos of them, and they are a very handsome man. And I was just, uh, just seeing them. Uh, I'm not sure that they enjoy. I'm not sure of how they feel about being, uh, how they feel about being an actor. Anyway, when I vision this character, I know that uh, on their live video, they did speak about. Uh, wanting something uh something like Bridgerton yeah I haven't watched Bridgerton yet so I'm unsure what type of um what what that show is about so this is something fresh and many people um think about the twin flame journey and say this or say that and what I can say is that I will represent the feminine template within the journey and then the other uh 
character would represent the masculine in the journey who would be the twin flame and if you don't know what a twin flame is a twin flame is uh said to be one soul split into the split into two separate into two separate bodies representing the mothering energy and the the fathering energy of the single soul journey so it's said to be one soul split into two bodies essentially um i think that is it would be important so that this movie could uh it could represent uh, a lot of things uh, for the LGBTQ plus community, uh, not even just the LGBTQ plus community, uh, QIA. Also, um, hetero, um, hetero identifying people, things like that. Uh, I think that it's important that I speak about this now for the reason that we are in the month of June. And, uh, yeah, so let's get back to this, uh, the, the other character. And this man, he just, he looks so good. His name is, uh, Zed Leroy. Uh, if you know him from YouTube with, uh, his videos, I'm just wondering why there isn't, uh, why he he should have his he should have his uh there should be videos of him that man is he is handsome and uh when I picture this this uh movie it is starring him and of course it's starring me like but yeah uh he's a very handsome man and I think that uh he uh he wants love and i sometimes i think about uh while writing while envisioning this i think about my personal journey on the twin flame journey where uh my well not well the divine masculine and my journey uh we aren't physically appearing in videos together and we are what they call in the, uh, the twin flame separation of our journey. He he spoke openly that he doesn't believe in soulmates. Uh, so I've I've come to the awareness that to be respectful of his inner feelings, thoughts, and emotions, that I'm not going to force the journey on him. And however, his source is healing him for his experience of the journey is for him now let's get back to the movie because this is the this is the the part but i do want to say that if it wasn't for having being in the twin flame separation there wouldn't be this as much knowledge of how the connection is so strong that we are still experiencing just experiencing one another in separation and I think it would be uh, different to experience the twin flame journey from an aspect of two men, seeing them as the mothering and fathering energy of source consciousness in the 3D collective. Because you have um, twin flames in some movies or what it is, what most people have seen the journey as is the movie 222, which has uh, a male, male and female lead for the what can be considered the divine masculine and divine feminine. You have uh, the Matrix Resurrections, uh, uh, Neve, and uh, you know the characters. Uh, then um Elena and Stefan where the universe cannot uh just continues to uh want them together you also have uh 
there was another oh and the famous hancock is what i spoke to my twin my twin about <laughs> and i referenced our journey being like that and most people most uh spiritualists will say you know maybe you, you shouldn't have done that and there's this thought that like maybe that shouldn't have been said yet it brought awareness of how it is not exactly like that because every twin flame journey is different so this would just be like a thought of how of how the journey is for maybe like two men mas uh two men twin flames or uh you know on the outside vessel as two men as two men as two men and it would probably bring ease to a lot of people knowing uh how the journey is and how even though you may think that you feel angered toward this being you are uh still wanting them and i just see my twin's birthday you're still wanting them even in separation even in anger even in fear even in uh wanting another person you are still connected to this uh to this other being for the reason that you and them share the same soul so energetically you share the same wants that same purpose uh that same mission to be together and for the masculine template as many divine feminines can uh vouch to maybe is that many divine masculine uh wake up to the connection after the divine feminine and so we are as a divine feminine experiencing the experiences that we had through them and allowing them to experience their their uh awakening to source consciousness and guiding them and sources reminding us of how it was in some ways so there isn't a title for this movie and it's also like a thought about it being a series like a, a series i thought about writing a book then writing like a long book what if it what if it took a longer time to become popular and since i am so young or considered young 30 then I could possibly be an actor and a leading actor in the the movie like that would be amazing okay like a fresh face uh beautiful as I feel maybe somebody else feels opposite I feel beautiful okay um amazing spectacular um I did have a thought about it being called Journey, The Journey to Us. Um, but I'm trying to think of something very marketable. Now, I just uh, put two names up here that aren't like set in stone. I just wrote this prior to starting the recording, but the names were Mikhail and Jahan. And I thought about it being called Adam and Steve. <laughs> About, about the names being Adam and Steve, like a play on Adam and Eve. Yeah, I think, uh, like, two names that don't identify as anything that's been uh, written before would read very well. And um, Mikhail, I just uh, thought about it being, like, my actor's name. And then Jahan being uh, Zed's uh, acting name. All right, and so they would be the two characters. Now, think about Mikhail being the feminine. So we're just going to write uh, feminine or F beside with uh, parentheses. And we're going to write M for 
the other character. And um, I know for sure that within, I want there to be like a play on other movies, like with, uh, I think they call them cameos, but like more of like references to other movies. So I want these uh, characters to have these powers that uh, connect them that that uh connect them i don't want it to start in the the beginning so i'm thinking of it as a series uh if if it was a series right um the angel said a movie earlier but i when i when i keep continue thinking about it i think of it as a series but it can be turned into a movie easily maybe and so i think that it's time for also i would like to say this it's time for uh, the LGBTQIA plus community to have a movie that is, uh, that there is a bigger budget. Like when I see, uh, oh, I also want to speak about Wonder Woman. I see some aspects of, of what happens in Wonder Woman that have the connection to, uh, the, the journey as well. And uh, it shows aspects of experiences with Source in that in that recent eighteen. I have the the movies. It's it's in there, but um, I would definitely like for there to be um, powers that they that they both have, uh, even like with Hancock. So I was thinking about in the third season or. The fourth season, the third season would really be where the the powers of them show up. I wouldn't want anything. I want it. I would want it to kind of be like reality based at the beginning. Like they have no clue that 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 these energies exist uh, with uh, within them until uh, I wanted to say that they connect in their dreams and throughout the, uh, the the first and second season of the show. And when they're connecting in their dreams, it seems so real like that the, the feminine is not sure of what kind of is uh, the 3D reality versus the dream world. And so when she's having, when she's actually waking up, she's not sure if, if she's waking up to what's actually being experienced so when they are having these intimate sexual moments together is truly not like a for sure of did did uh did we did we kiss or did we have did we have a sexual encounter and you know or was it a was it a dream and uh there's this uh part where I wanted to get really deep, like the masculine, the the masculine energy would struggle with uh, being open with his sexuality, which is what happens in most uh, twin flame journeys. The masculine would really uh, have a difficult time with uh, experiencing who he is, but the power of the love between the two characters would allow him to realize that he needs the, the feminine is as much as the feminine needs the masculine, which is what the journey is. Um, I, I'm not going to say it's truly about, but you realize during the journey that you are a complete soul and you, you have to have each other. You, you cannot exist without your soul. <laughs> your soul exists because you exist. And so, um, I want to get to the to the deep part because what is coming up? I want the uh, the feminine to I want the feminine I want it to be kind of uh, somewhat like a a dark take on the experience with the feminine uh, being hurt by her masculine in a way that transformed her to this like uh, super warrior, and so when they meet up again, she is like she's angry but she understands her power and how 
what she what how she uh, speaks to the masculine and allows the mas masculine to experience her also ex affects her. So she she like has this like this uh, kind of like I could end you, but I can't end you <laughs> for the reason that we are the same soul. And um, uh, so. <laughs> I guess Chloe likes likes to take on this movie. Now, when there is a specific part where when he is uh he's basically at the beginning they would have like this uh this uh it would kind of be like more I don't want to say drama filled, but they just kind of get to know each other at the beginning. Like, they get to know each other at the beginning and they're having these dreams. And maybe the masculine uh, gets freaked out by, or Jahan gets freaked out by these dreams because they start to get really real for him. And uh, maybe, I haven't got that deep into, like, the the drama or the drama reality part of that, of the movie. But what I do know, the specific parts that I want to speak about are, there will be a jail scene where the feminine uh, actually goes to jail. Um, and the, cause I, I can relate to that for the reason that I've experienced jail. So this is kind of like a, uh, in any other feminine, this is kind of like a, uh, a healing healing to be able to speak about this movie idea this is idea and so when the feminine uh the feminine truly a, experiences her power within prison and i want it to be where she's just uh she has this dream that isn't connected to her m masculine but she has this dream that uh there's a there's a family member that she uh experiences is uh about to pass and if you remember the uh the final destination movies where uh the character i remember there's a final destination 2 dvd in there and the character was seeing like the visions so this would be a vision of like a a parent and the parent um being on the hospital bed but it's not sure so let's say that the fem the feminine in the prison has this dream uh, or a prophecy that's delivered to her and when she has that dream let's just say uh prior to her being in prison she she did all this all these things to to try to keep her and her masculine together and she's seen that her masculine didn't show up for her so now she's in this this dark energy and when she has that that dream that kind of like triggers her to uh fully understand or become aware of her power and when she has that uh that uh dream she just kind of like it's like it just goes she just completely is like that's when the powers ignite and so she just busts out the the jail but I wanted to be like, uh, like she just kind of like busts out the jail, and that's when uh, it's kind of like how Wonder Woman was with uh, the mall scene where she was busting the mall, the uh, swinging through the mall. But this is like she's just like, like uh, Mikhail would be busting through the, busting through the. Uh, through the, you know, the bars or whatever, or the steel door. And they're just kind of looking like, what the, like, you know, cause they, they didn't under, they didn't know that Mikhail possessed this power.
I also forgot to mention that there's a movie that is called Dune that um, shows where they're like the two counterparts that are having dreams that connect them. You can also see where uh, in the Vampire Diaries, the dreams connect the two counterparts also. But I forgot to mention that Dune, you can see where they are connected through their dreams. Also in Star Wars, uh, I think it was closest to one of the recent movies that was seen. Uh, there is where they uh, connect through their dreams. So yeah. This would be a perfect time to add that the shared uh, uh, connection that the two characters would have is like where on the Vampire Diaries, where Raina Cruz could see her targets and see through their eyes what uh, her targets were doing. The characters, uh, Jahan and uh, Mikhail, would be able to see what was happening through their eyes. So that would kind of connect them. I think that would be like amazing to happen. Now, uh I want I want to say that um if if Mikhail is having you know these dreams then I want Jahan to be kind of like just uh going about his journey and not really uh knowing what's happening but he he wants that connection with the Mikhail but he's uh but Jahan is in that experience of 3D consciousness where he only believes in uh the three D experience of male with female. Male should be with female. And so the masculine isn't really involved in the feminine's experience and he's receiving these dreams that are connected to the feminine yet uh he's somewhat just being like passive about his about his dreams and uh so that that we're just gonna say that that is like a part that i think um experiencing that dark moment of it being like busting through the steel doors and just like a, not attacking the guards but but if it was a if it was a dark experience when they if they start shooting then uh it would just become it could become like really really like you know a dark experience um there are more, like, ideas. I'm just not going to speak about everything on here. I just want to speak about, like, those media experiences. I want to say that um, the feminine energy would have, like, dreams of a wedding with Jahan and Mikkel. Yet, when they are... Ex when Mikkel is experiencing these dreams about a wedding, thinking that they're going to get uh married maybe it can be for uh it can be a prophecy for another an uh like a friend or something yet they do actually get married maybe in like the fifth season but let's say that the prophecy the prophetic dream that is being had is like a prophecy from uh, like a prophecy that is had in like season the end of season one beginning of season two so that way it like builds up like th they have she had uh Mikhail has these prophetic dreams that are like so vivid and she's um I see keep saying she for like the feminine energy she's seeing herself kissing her masculine um like and having this this amazing like it being like butterflies and rainbows and all of that bull get yeah. 
the masculine is the masculine the masculine is presenting something totally different and although he truly wants the same thing and maybe his path his uh, path his past is keeping him from doing it. it's not that he doesn't want that relationship with Mikkel. the masculine is hurt from maybe females that have hurt him and considers uh Mikkel uh capable of doing those things that the females have done and so he ultimately the feminine energy Mikkel gets uh rejected but it's because of Jahan's uh, um, insecurities or insecure thoughts and things like that. Now, when they're having this, this like these uh, dreams about the wedding in season in season two, they're just like very involved, and I wanted to be like very like their dream life is very sexual, very like. I want the, the dream life in season one and season two to depict sort of what's going to happen in the future seasons. And it just not being like a full picture. So when they're in the, the, the dream world, they are having these experiences of them like uh, being very like uh, much using their powers and um, flying and saving the world. But they're doing it together. They have this uh this marriage and things like that but in the actual like 3d reality it can uh for at least at least for the first and second season it would show up kind of different and so mikhail being the energy that is experiencing things first is just kind of getting like the the brunt of it and truly not knowing if um if like what like am am I experiencing this real? Does does Jahan truly want want this with Mikhail? And so I I think that the jail scene could be like uh very big. And let's just say that after uh the getting out of jail, that Mikhail the feminine energy goes to the hospital to uh to visit his parent. Let's just say his his uh Mikhail's mother is in the hospital. But now let's say that Mikhail has a lineage of witches or psychics or whatever you would like to call them that are so strong that they actually help Mikhail during his journey so when I, I kind of want that part to be very uh I'm kind of it's just to be um I want it to kind of be like uh the mother can the mother to Mikhail on her deathbed is kind of like saying things like you fag and um just being like uh really uh like um uh it, it being a a moment that begins to get so real because uh Mikhail it gets real for Mikhail when Mikhail realizes that he escaped prison to be with his uh parent on their on their on their bed and realizing that his parent is saying all these things but it's coming like an entity like that's kind of like i told you about being a fat you little fag or some, something that's just like really like what like you know like what and i want uh the it kind of be like, uh, you remember how, like, Us, the movie Us, where the, <laughs> I said you remember Us. <laughs> you remember when in the, in the, um, 
movie Us and she does a smile like I kind of want it to be like one of those moments where the other family members that are in the room just kind of smile at him like and his his mother is saying these things and he's looking at his family members who are smiling so it's kind of like he's like what but then she uh, it, it goes back to like a regular kind of like a reality moment for Mikhail where the nurses start to, the nurses come in and the family just starts acting regular like nothing happened. And so uh, let's say a moment where the parent um, starts to say, you're gonna, you're gonna, you gonna, can you help me? Like, help me, like, help, please help. Like, uh, like if you've ever seen like, um, the what is that it was just this movie like recently where there was this uh possessed entity in this woman where where she was just like um like baby i love you i love you and it just like turned like real uh what what they call it cynic or not like insidious but uh the let's just say the mother's just like help help me help me help me and um as she's like you know, slowly like, uh, you know, closing and uh, experiencing, you know, a flat line. Let's say that, that she says um, that his family's like saying, saying these things like, help me little fag, help me little fag, help him, help me little gay boy or something like that. That's just like really dark and you wouldn't expect it to happen like that. And let's say that, uh, after, um, you know, um, let's say his, his, uh, parent has a full recovery. I want somehow for, in this, uh, series for Mikhail to experience like death and what most people think is death is like, uh, being in a casket, um, and six feet under, but this will this would have like a more spiritual meaning behind it. And if you know about the the divine feminine or the swirl, would stand for uh, you know I'm not even writing anything down because I kind of like just remember most of these things. But there would be like a swirl, right? And the swirl would represent uh, death, birth, and rebirth. And um, if a divine feminine would like to elaborate, then go ahead. But uh, I'm sure that that's what it means because I've been doing research <laughs> uh, probably way before this video. But um, when that uh, somehow Mikhail is going to experience the death weight, Mikhail is actually, and this is a really big part. Mikhail is actually in a casket and if you've ever watched the Vampire Diaries where if you haven't watched it it's a good uh, series to watch there's a part where Elena is in her casket like burning on fire but her body is still there I want Mikhail to be like uh, showing up in flames like burning the same way that Elena was for the uh, show but what happens is it actually turns to uh, ash. It actually turns to, to ash or whatever. And um, now I'm remembering now that while they're walking, prior to walking and doing the casket, and now that, that part would happen when there is, it's the actual service of Mikhail's like, going away he like when he's like gone and I'm there's like a decision that that's going to be made about whether the masculine actually shows up and the part the reason that I want the the, the family kind of to be saying these things is because the family is actually helping him to become stronger even though these things are being said and he's like learning you know 
these things, these lessons, he's learning these lessons through his family, who is actually like keeping their lineage alive through giving Mikkel these uh, experiences that he may see, may see as tough. But this, uh, the death part is uh, about death, birth, and rebirth because he's actually becoming this new version of himself. Now, when prior to Mikkel actually experiencing burning and, and dying. He actually, uh, the family members that uh, come up to the casket, there are some that genuinely love, that genuinely love Mikhail. And there are some family members that say some really uh, dark things to him while he's in his casket or think things in his casket. But for the reason that Mikkel is on the other side, he's also hearing what they're saying. Maybe he's like standing beside the casket and actually like hearing, like it's a, um, you know how Bonnie in the Vampire Diaries would uh, be on the other side and be listening to what they say. Maybe he's like on the other side and he's listening. He's listening to uh, what is being said about him through these family members. And I want it to be like this massive part where the preacher is preaching and Mikhail speaks to the family members that were actually kind to him and says, you need to go leave the, uh, leave the, leave the church now. Right. And so when he speaks to the family members, it's, it's kind of like a auditory message and they're not, they're not sure if it's real yet. The family has the secret about being a, a witch lineage. And many uh, spiritualists and psychic mediums and things like that uh, are aware that when we have these messages that are heard and we aren't obedient to these messages, we are aware of what happens. But um, like, I'm not really like, uh, like really sure of what happened during the, what they call the witch trials, but I'm sure that there's a lot of information about it. But this can kind of be like where when Mikhail speaks to his family members, because he is essentially becoming this new version of himself. And he has experienced all of these things in the past that have brought him to this powerful um, new version. And he he is about to, the, the church is about to be like a... Um, what they call it when they when uh, a person gets uh cremated the church is about to be like that so let's say the family members that don't leave that dis that are disobedient they're about to get locked in the church and let's say that the door starts shutting on their own and it he just starts he just he, let's say that uh, it's Mikhail's turn to be like the bitch of the of the series and says something like i told you to leave and then it just gets right he just starts uh like say say he told them to leave and then his body just gets inflamed and then uh fire somehow the the fire gets caught onto like many things of the church now let's say that the family members that were disobedient but are deserving to leave let's say that mikhail starts to communicate to them after they maybe Maybe the family members, uh, they don't go out un, un, uh, like nothing, when nothing happened to them. But let's say that uh, maybe a flame touched them or something. And when some of the family members may have escaped, but a lot of them didn't. And uh, let's just say the church, the church at that point burns down. So now even though Mikhail's this new version of himself. I wanted to say that that's the, that's the part that, that's what uh, Mikhail as a feminine energy goes to prison for because they, they pin the, uh, the fire on him. And he just basically, uh, the feminine energy massacred all these people. Now, He's consumed with all this power. And when he, you know, so that would be like where that point where he busts through the, 
through the through the door yeah so let's say that that would happen so the church scene would actually happen before the jail scene because he's rebirthing to this new energy yet his for the first two seasons let's just say it's Mikhail and Jahan like truly getting to become aware of each other and um yeah now oh i wanted to say this when mikhail experiences his death and he's on the other side he's only speaking to these to family members that have already passed long ago that are like giving him this information about maybe truths of the family and they're they're like literally get uh gifting him the, their their power or and so they're communicating things uh, you know, to him that they're watching from the other side when he is actually on the physical plane. Uh, and so let's say that he masked his uh, power um, when he truly understands his gift to be of service in some way in the, the psychic world as maybe a tarot reader. And um, There was something else. Oh, this is this is something else that I want to speak about before I, because it's four 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 four, and um, when maybe this uh, the two main characters. I was thinking about either at the beginning of the of the series or movie that they could be um, in college. Uh, it'd be a college setting. Could you see, kind of look, you know, do it, does it look 30? And, uh, you know, um, Zed is about to enter his 30s. I just think, I just say him because that's why I envision, because if it wasn't for the Twin Flames journey, I would love to kiss him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Maybe I'm not. But anyway, uh, he would be, uh, the other character, Jahan, would be, um, they could be maybe like, uh, college students. And if not college students, let's just say that, uh, maybe they're already in their profession, but somehow... Their profession leads them to each other. I even thought about it, uh, it being like tied to like, uh, not tied to, but a cameo uh, of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And Mikel and Jahan maybe are assigned the same, same job. And when they meet each other, they're kind of like, put against each other only to be together in some way that hasn't been like it hasn't been like a huge thought about what uh, how that can how that can go but I'm sure that I could pull off still being a college kid or a college student and um yeah. It's not the hair ain't that thick, is it? And um I thought about some other I would like for this to be like and this isn't a this is more to like uplift like the LGBTQ community and the African American community. I know uh I've seen a lot of African American um, activists that um, speak about how they feel trying to have these jobs as uh, actors and it be mainstream and it be something that's powerful, something that's fresh, something that's new. I think that it would be great for some of these characters to be uh, people like Tabitha Brown. She said that uh, she was studying to be an actress or she studied and 
actress roles and she has her TV shows. I think like uh, another handsome man is Malik McIntyre. That's what it, Malik uh, McIntyre. He, he is a handsome, he's a fresh face. Uh, if, if somehow he could be like a college friend um, uh, I'm thinking of fresh faces, faces that you haven't seen like on a big screen or like in like a series for long periods of time that are LGBTQ plus advocates. Uh, I, I like what Tusi said. What do you say to these people questioning your sexuality online? Calling somebody gay is not an insult. People try to people try to use it as an insult, but it's what it's 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 people's sexuality. Mm -hmm. you know, whatever somebody's sexuality is, is not an insult. Mm -hmm. right. So don't try to throw it on a black man to down him because you feel like that's gonna it's not gonna that that's not gonna bring me down. What bring me down is the fact that you're trying to use it as an insult while I got my son in my hand, knowing that one of these days he's gonna have to get on the internet and see this. And I don't want I don't need nothing being misled like Oh, dad, is this wrong? Like, is it? Nah, it's not wrong, son. At the end of the day, like, you ha you got some people who like women, and you got some people who like men, son, and that's how it is. But we ain't finna do that with my son in my hand. Like, we ain't finna, because one of these days, though, he gonna have to get on this internet mm -hmm. to see this, so. But what was wrong with the cowboy uh, outfit? I had a knitted vest on. In the knitted, in, in the, on the knitted vest, you kind of could see through it a little bit. Right. But at the end of the day, you go back to these pictures, I done seen, I done seen, um, Everybody. Tupac and, right. and, and, and and like bralettes, not bralettes, but like the uh the whatchamacallits, like mm -hmm. leather jeans and mm -hmm. like yo, at, it's fashion. Mm -hmm. And what people don't know is like while y'all on the internet plan, a lot of these people that's on top of the game is gay. Reference to how his sweater, uh about the comments that were made about his sweater, because he didn't it wasn't the way that he responded was a was an honorable way of responding. If that's even, it can be said because it was said. But uh, I think that I would love to. I would love, if I could help produce this. Oh, that would be so amazing. Um, I think that it would be great. I think that the. Uh, the collective, the world needs that. And uh if it, it to be like a very like honest portrayal about things, uh about how um uh how African American people are seen and it being something that like brings the African American LGBTQ plus uh, people together to experience each other in a different in a different light to understand the them. Uh, like uh, what's his name? Tyler Perry has a uh, has his own network. It would be great that. I'm not sure if it's a Tyler Perry movie. I'm not sure. There would also have to be like uh I thought about uh the the guy that wrote um Nope. And I'm sure of his name. It's there. The, they're like amazing creators, like black creators. I think this would be like a, a space for African-American creators. Not saying that there won't be uh, white actors or actresses in this movie. I'm saying that this would be an opportunity for it being a leading African-American movie, like how we see a lot of majority of movies, and this is just an honest, uh, view of most movies are predominantly majority uh white presenting with uh african actors here and there but this would be a movie that represents um blackness and uh it being real 
uh, oh, Patrick Ian Polk. Now, I did uh, write him, like, years ago. Um, maybe in, like, 2015 or 2016 or something like that. Uh, about a movie idea when somehow, and I thought about uh, Amazon Prime, but uh, Patrick Ian Polk, I seen uh, that he was actually, I'm not sure if he was the director or creator of P Valley, but this would, um, um, he's a, he's a great writer and we all enjoy, uh, Noah's Ark or have enjoyed Noah's Ark. If you know about it, then you know, but, oh, that would be a great addition. Like, uh, Noah and Wade showing up is like the cousins and the, and the, the, at the funeral, of Mikhail, but or, or not being able to show up and let's say that uh Mikhail moves with them that would be a great cameo um i think it would be awesome if uh men who are said to or, or are accused of gay accusations could be a part of could be a part of the uh, project as well. It would be amazing. Even women that are, that support the LGBTQ plus community and truly understand, you know, the things that the community has struggles with to be a part of it. I think that it was, it's a time where uh, those fresh faces, like fresh faces could, uh, be a part of this movie but it not being like a low budget it being like a lot of work put into it like i saw that uh wonder woman was uh like 80 million dollar budget i saw that and i'm not for sure how true that is but that's what was saw right and i think that if it was like a character the the two characters them overall wanting I seen five five five, which is a sign for twin flames to be together, right? Uh, it would be like overall love would be bringing them together. Yeah. Um, oh, Zed Leroy, he he is a um. He is North African, yet he resembles a more Arabic side. So he doesn't present like as dark as I am presenting in my complexion, right? Like, I think that, uh, so this isn't like a, uh, a, a vision that is excluding people who aren't representing African-American culture. I think that this would be a great opportunity to... Um, for African American uh, beings to be represented is, uh, you know, within who they are, their truth. And uh, I've seen a lot of people openly speaking about Twin Flames. Now, I do have a I'm about to wrap this up because it's, it's getting long. <laughs> and uh, I've seen uh, artists like Drake speaking about uh, this young lady being his twin flame. And uh, I know in a previous a previous video on my other YouTube page, I spoke about uh, Drake being a twin flame to somebody else. And I'm sure that that's the way the universe is wanting me to... Uh, <laughs> The universe is saying, yeah. And, and Drake is, Drake is like spiritually saying, yeah, I know. I know what you said. So, yeah. Even if like those beings could be a part of the project. And this is like when people say dream big, dream big. And I think that this is like a big dream that could, if the work was put in, it could potentially be a great, like, uh, what the word franchise was thought of. So, um, because I don't want this to be like extremely 
long and I'm probably going to uh, I know what I am going to do with this video because I've instructed for my angels to do something specific but uh, I will be going live on one of, I'm already alive in color is uh, the TS Madison says uh, be going doing a live video on um, a social media platform and start uh, implementing these ideas because you never know who's watching to help these things be produced. Um, yeah. And if this, uh, we're just going to leave it at that. And I'll speak more about it on the social, social medias and uh, things like that. Yeah. Somebody could, so, there is definitely uh, somebody that could take a chance with hoping this be produced as a series or either a movie. And I said $80 million would be like considered like, you know, for a movie budget. So there's just this, however it would be, if, if it could be successful as a series, it could last, you know, very long. I'm thinking like, uh, you know, many seasons, but if it, if it was a movie, it could be a great movie too. So, yeah. So we're going to end uh, end this on a good note and hopefully deliver this. And to the loo.